If you want to build a rocket, you're going to need some rocket fuel. And this is no exception for Astro's rocket, Transcendence, which is going to be using a hybrid design. Essentially, this means that we have nitrous oxide as our oxidizer, and we have paraffin wax as our fuel. But how do we go about making that solid paraffin wax fuel? It seems like it should be simple. After all, paraffin wax is just candle wax, but it turns out it's a lot more complicated than that. But no need to fear, we've now mastered the process, and we're going to share all the juicy secrets of how we did it coming up. If you think back to last summer, you may remember that Astra actually attempted to build a paraffin wax fuel grain already once before. Unfortunately, the paraffin grain that we produced was not exactly usable. It was very patchy and splotchy and super brittle and definitely not usable as rocket fuel. I don't know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> so we had to go back to the design board in order to figure out why exactly this happened and what we could change about the way we're manufacturing the paraffin wax in order to make sure that we have a satisfactory result in the next iteration. One problem at a time, boy. The first problem we had had to do with the rotation. So you can see here that we don't really have an even surface along the paraffin wax grain in our first trial. And this is because we weren't actually generating enough centrifugal force in order to force the paraffin wax to the edges of the tube that we're spinning the grain in. If the centrifugal force inside that tube exceeds the gravitational acceleration of the paraffin wax inside the tube, then basically what will happen is it'll create a new level, which will be a perfect circle along the inside of the tube diameter. If you remember back to our trial in the summer, we actually had a huge problem with motor overheating and essentially we lost the ability to use the motor, so we were basically just hand spinning it. So in order to get more rotation, we basically just needed a bigger motor. And of course, with the switch to more power, you also need more structure. So we actually needed some bigger adapters and gears in order to transmit the force from the motor to the tube in a way that was controlled. The solution for this upgrade was to just use a belt drive, which had a 1 to 3 ratio. So we had 3000 RPM on our motor and 1000 RPM on the tube. But there's one other issue with spinning that fast, which is that now you're actually generating a lot of force on the tube, which could become a bit of a problem for structural integrity. After all, we are spinning this inside of a PVC tube, which of course gets a little bit softer as it gets hotter. So we decided that we needed a way to shore up the structural integrity of the tube. And to do this, we basically just created the casing, which was made out of fiberglass. Of course, if you've been following the structures team at Astra, we've actually gotten quite good at winding fibrous materials around mandrels. So it seemed natural to give the structures team one more job of winding another tube, which would be benefiting the propulsion team for making this propulsion grain. The next problem that we had with our previous contraption was actually the stability. Now that we've upgraded to the bigger two kilowatt motor, it's kind of important that we actually are able to contain all of that energy. So we had to upgrade that wood stand to an aluminum one. Unfortunately, this means there's a little bit more energy in order to make the stand because you can't just like screw a bunch of wood planks together. But the benefit that it confers through stability is really advantageous, so definitely worth the effort. Finally, if you remember back to the paraffin wax grain that we made before, it was actually super brittle. So it didn't really have a lot of plasticity, and if it was chipped or hit or anything, it basically would just crumple apart. So to solve this problem, we had to actually address the chemical formula that we're using in order to make the paraffin wax grain. Before we were using paraffin wax and a little bit of powderized cement, but that actually ended up just making the paraffin wax really brittle. So in order to solve this, we're going to actually not add the powderized concrete anymore. And instead, we're going to try to add some plasticity by adding some hot glue gun sticks to the paraffin wax. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? This is actually an idea that was suggested by Jamie Anderson, which is one of the subscribers to our channel. So just goes to show you that if you have some good ideas about how we should approach things, sometimes they actually end up being the best idea to pursue. But let's see if this recommendation actually worked in the end. And go. This looks so weird. <laughs> okay, lid, lid, lid. Lid goes on now. Lid now. Be ready, guys. Yeah, slide, 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 slide. There we go. Good. Okay. Tension belt. Belt, belt. first, belt first, belt first. Check it 
bearings? Yeah. The bearings. Check the bearing. Yeah, that's okay. Check this bearing? Yes. Yes. Check the bearing. You have your own way? Go, 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 go. You go there, you're set there. That's good. Okay. No, 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 Keep talking. What is what's the video? So I think we need to keep some weight over here also. Let's yeah. Put, let's put some weight over here. Yeah. Yeah. We have something, heavy. something other with weight. Big and heavy. Use oh. those bags. These are uh, yeah, those ten are kilos, I think. Uh, these ones. Ah, yeah, these yeah. Just, just, just grab on over your shoulder. That's the fastest way. It's just dirt, yeah. Okay. Put it over your shoulder. One more. One more. Yeah, get one more. Yeah, of course. I fit. Yeah, everything. Yeah, I just move. Move. Yeah, the whole system moves like this. Okay, move the box. Move the box. Here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that, that would be good. Yeah. Can I get a second one right here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. On this as well? Someone needs to help me. Okay, move those, move those. They're big there. Come on, somebody needs to have spinning. Put them right there. Good. No, no, no. Are they oh. coming? Yeah, they're coming. Oh, warm? that's nice and warm. Yeah, it is. Put it on your shoulders. Really straining. I'm coming. One on there. Oh, wait, oh, wait. One on there. No, one on there, one there, on there. Yeah. Put it over here. Yes. Where? No, that's good. Don't do okay, away! Away! Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on. Switch! Unfortunately, the aluminum stand was not quite enough in order to stave off the vibrations that were caused by the bigger motor. So we had to actually add a lot of dirt to the stand in order to prevent that from continuing to vibrate. And in the end, we ended up adding about 80 kilograms of dirt. So <laughs> it was actually quite a lot, but in the end, I guess it was working, so. We're six minutes, nearly seven minutes in. We need no. to monitor it That's carefully over the next 10 to 15 minutes because it's gonna start solidifying on the other side. And the, um, Moment of inertia is going to start going up, 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 up. Uh -huh. So it's going to get harder on the motor. So we want to make sure that something, like if something's going to change, it'll change now. So we should be careful and not get complacent. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. How many hours time uh, does it get solidified? I mean? It's going to take a couple hours. It's roughly solidified. We want to set a timer. We want the temperature of it to decrease down to around 30 degrees Celsius. It should go faster than it went in the summer because it's yeah. a lot colder out. Wow. <laughs> It'll help us. We were like going below 40, right, last time? Yeah, last time yeah. it was tough to get, oh, because it was 30 degrees outside. Yeah, so it's like, very hard on the... Uh, now it's zero, so <laughs> it'll be a lot easier. We tried to do a little bit of analysis on the vibration that we were seeing by listening to the frequencies that were coming off the stand. Uh, somewhere between 50 and 100. Yeah, we, we just... It's logarithmic though. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. So it's probably like 30 to 50. Maybe you just do it for longer. Say it somehow. But unfortunately, the rotational frequency of the motor was kind of dominating the spectrum, so we couldn't really parse out the vibrations that we were seeing on the stand on one of the ends. Maybe if we had some better audio equipment, we could figure this out. But for now, uh, adding sandbags is really the best way we can go. 
We took a lot of care to make sure that the stand was relatively safe in its operation. In order to do this, we basically made sure that no one was in the area of the spinning tube while it was actually going. That way, if it happened to break off the stand or something, it wouldn't roll into somebody or hit somebody. We also made sure the direction that the tube would roll would actually go into a bunch of bushes and a fence, which would probably stop it, and not into the open where it could become a danger. When you're making a stand like this or manufacturing something like this, it's good to think about the situational awareness of the area around you, just to make sure that you're remaining safe and not going to have your homemade contraption blow up on you. After two hours of spinning, we're finally able to open up the tube and see what we've created. Yep. Oh, let's just remove it all the way. Yeah, the gun doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Ah, doesn't. Yeah, it's just okay. drop it. Just drop it? Yeah. Makes sense. Yep. Okay, it's in piece of memory. Don't go yet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 really? It comes off. Okay. Just pull, just pull. Hey! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Look at it. this! Oh, look at this! Look thing. at this! We are propulsion engineers! Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Would you look at that? This is, this is awesome! This is like it's exactly smooth. perfect. What? Wait, check this temperature inside. Oh, yeah, that too. Gorgeous. Beautiful. 3.6. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Totally cool. Uh, uh. Whoa, that's smooth as. Wait, yeah. I want to feel that. <laughs> I can feel it. You can see here that we have a perfectly smooth surface on the paraffin wax that's perfectly cylindrical. This is just because our RPM was high enough in order to generate the centrifugal force that would keep that cylindrical shape while it was spinning. It was also really nice that the cold weather kind of helped us in cooling the paraffin wax down a lot quicker. It only took about two hours, whereas in the summertime it was taking us a lot longer and we actually still had the inside of the tube somewhere near 40, 45 degrees. But here it went all the way down to three degrees in just two hours, which is absolutely fantastic. Nice. So there you have it. Astra has finally completed our first paraffin wax fuel grain. It's only a matter of time till we plug this into a propulsion test stand and light her up. If you have any questions about how we manufactured this paraffin wax fuel grain or any ideas about how we could improve, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And remember to expand your horizons.